Hey again guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Walt Moore, host of Dan Wilson. And back over at the old house again. And today I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of sheetrock patching here in the old bedroom here. we got a small hole in the wall over here. And um, so I'll pass on a couple tips there. Show you guys how we're going to patch this up and fix that little problem there. If you do this on your own, few things you're going to need to have on hand, of course, a good tape measure and a pencil. Also a good drywall saw. I just bought this one about a week or two ago and it's a darn good one. Super sharp. There's a good drywall saw. Also guys, we're going to be needing a utility knife like what I have right here. And what makes this utility knife work so much better I'm just kind of joking a little bit. Make sure you have a good sharp blade in it. If you're not supposed to be running anything sharp, then <laughs> you better leave this stuff alone. So there we go. That's all our basic tools. Here in just a minute, we'll get to work on patching this hole in the drywall. Okay, guys, hope you can see right here we got a hole in the wall. So I got a little, a little wild with the door a while back and punched a little hole in the sheetrock right here from the doorknob. First thing we want to do is measure this. And we've got about a two and a half inch hole right there. So here in just a minute, I'll show you guys how we're gonna patch this up and put a replacement piece in there. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, what I have here, just a small piece of sheetrock I cut out. We're gonna to attempt to do here, what we commonly refer to as a butterfly patch. So the way to do this is, we're gonna go on the back side of our piece here. See the paper looks a little different there. Here's our front side, here's the back side. So we're going to cut some of our sheetrock back here on the back side and hopefully if it goes well, we'll leave at least an inch or so of paper around the edges right there. Give us something to tape it down to. So here we go. I'm just going to roughly measure a little bit. I'm going to say actually about three quarter of an inch will be plenty good. And this is not real super precise. This is just uh, kind of a rough guy, so we're not going to get too particular with it. So just about like we have about three quarter of an inch all the way around. I didn't measure and that's, that's okay, I can just wing it. And there we go. Okay, next thing guys, we'll take our utility knife and we're just going to score this along these edges here. And then we'll just start to uh, peel some of this back a little bit. And like that, just start peeling the paper off. And then we'll just take our knife and start scoring the sheetrock in a few spots here. We'll go ahead and cut a little more down into the sheetrock we're taking away. Again, the idea here, guys, is to score this to where we're not cutting into the paper on the front side. <clears throat> now, guys, I want to tell you, if you're doing this yourself, be very, very careful with a sharp knife like this. <laughs> it can slip fairly easily, and, and you can get a cut finger or thumb pretty easily, so be very, very careful with this. I'm just pulling kind of gently at it here. And we're going to start to kind of break it away. Pull back on the edges there just a little bit. Try to be very careful not to rip the paper on the front side. It's very important we leave that intact. That's the whole idea. So I'm just kind of peeling this off with my finger at this point so we can keep from damaging the paper on the front side. So far it's holding together pretty darn well. It's a bit of a messy job, but that's just part of it. When you're cutting sheetrock, it's just going to make a mess no matter what. <clears throat> Almost impossible to avoid. Okay guys, you can see here, our patch piece came out almost perfect. Fits right in there. And next thing we're going to need is a little bit of drywall mud. This is what I have here. And of course, when this stuff comes out of the can, it's a little too thick. So, what we got to do, I just got through adding a little bit of water to it. We're going to need to thin this down just a little bit. So, we just 
take it and work it a little bit like Play-Doh or something. So it's about the right consistency. Break my knife off. I just got to mention too, guys, one thing you need too is a good, uh, about a six inch wide uh, taping knife, this is called. Very essential, we gotta have that. And the mud is looking about, what do we call it, drywall mud, joint compound, there's different names for it. It's all the same stuff. Gotta get it thinned down enough where it's gonna be a little easier, more workable. Oh yeah, I got a little too thin, so not a major problem. I'll add a little more drywall compound to this. Anyway guys, in this case, if you get your uh, drywall compound a little too thin, just add a little more to it, work it in with your knife, like what I'm doing right here. Stir it up good. It's a little tricky when you're thinning this compound out. There's no precise formula to it. It just gets it where it's kind of a creamy, look sort of that's looking about right there so let's go ahead and get this going here so I'm just gonna pull my paper back here and there and we're gonna put some drywall mud right up in here just like this that's a little thicker than what needs to be which is not a problem I'll come back and squish that out here in just a minute and add some more here on this side all the way around the patch area. Again, I say drywall is very, very forgiving, so this is not a precise science. It's just uh, one of several ways to do a patch like this. And this is one of the easier ones to do. In some larger areas, if we have a very large area to patch, we'll want to put in a backer board first. Slick this out just a little bit more here, a little more on this side here, a little more across the top, just like that. I gotta rake my knife off, and I'll go ahead and put my paper, start working my paper down like this, pull it across there, and across the top. slight indentation here which is not a problem it's going to take some drywall mud go right on top of it just like that fill that in nice and neat slip the sides out a little more here break the knife down again and guys one thing with this too it takes several coats of drywall compound to really get this slicked out good and I'll come back after this dries for about 24 hours, I'll come back and add drywall tape on the outsides of this, and then I'll float that out with the drywall compound, and I'll make this to where you'd never know there was any damage in the first place. One thing to note to you guys, if you do this on your own, um, try not to get too much drywall compound on there right away. It's best to do this in fairly thin layers, kind of like what I'm doing here. And we'll let this dry overnight, and then by tomorrow or the next day, whenever I can get back to it, I'll come back and, like I said, I'll tape all around the edges there and fill this middle part in just a little more. And it'll be all fully repaired. Okay, guys, like you see here, I've um, successfully installed the butterfly patch. The reason it's called that because with the paper overlapping, it looks a little like butterfly wings, I guess, if they get that term. That's how you do that. Just work it in there, put a little mud around the edges there, slick it out good. And as I already said, I'll let that dry about 24 hours, at least overnight. By tomorrow, I'll come back and put a finish coat on there, tape around the edges. So anyway, uh, just a little tidbit on patch and drywall. In case you guys get into something like this on your own, that's one way to do this. We get into some large repair, like I said, we'll put a backer board in there and whatever else needs to be done. But for now, that butterfly patch is going to be just fine on that area. Make it look just like new. So, oh, anyway, um, guys, I've mentioned I'm not a full-time professional drywaller, but I have done that in years past and quite a bit of it actually, and still pretty good at doing patch-up work. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for checking it out. 
And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel on there. Subscribe link is right over there in the corner, guys. Also hit that like button for me if you like this kind of video content. Anyway, once again, Walt Morrison, Dan Wilson. Thanks for watching. You guys take care. God bless.